Hello, this is a bit of game dev. And in light of recent Unity news, I have decided that learning a second engine is a priority. I have chosen to learn Unreal Engine since it's a direct competitor to Unity and an extremely capable engine for game dev as well as other use cases. While reading the documentation and looking at other tutorials, I struggled to find good examples of beginner C++ programming in Unreal Engine. While blueprints are a powerful tool for designers and prototyping, I personally don't like them too much as it becomes too much of a headache to read through. Thus, I decided to create this video and although I'm a beginner myself, I will try to showcase what I've learned and the very basics of C++ programming in Unreal. Keep in mind, I will cut some corners regarding clean code, as I want it to be as simple as possible and mainly show the common concepts. All comments and tips are greatly encouraged as they will not only help me, but others watching this video to better understand Unreal Engine. While thinking of what I could show as an example, I remembered how I myself started learning game dev, and that was by following Unity's Rollerball example tutorial, which I thought is a perfect example for people starting out even in Unreal. So to start, I will be using Unreal Engine 5.3. Once you've downloaded Unreal and set up Visual Studio, let's open the Unreal Editor and select the blank project. Then, in the bottom right corner, change it to C++. I will name my project a Rollerball project and click Create. It may take a while for the project to open as it's configured for C++. When the project opens up, you may have a different layout in mind, but don't worry, to change the layout just go to Window, Load Layout, and then Classic UE4 Layout. Now, for anyone coming from Unity, Scenes are called levels in Unreal. And as you can see, we have an example level open, but let's create our own. I will separate things into folders, but feel free to organize how you like. We create a level by right-clicking and selecting a level. Now open up our level, and we just see a black screen, so let's start placing objects inside. On the menu to the left, there are objects we can use to design our level. We can just drag and drop them and similar to Unity, for each object when selected in the details panel on the right side of the screen, we have a transform component to position and scale them. Now that our level is designed, the only important thing is to place the player start object. And as the name suggests, this is where our player object will spawn. Now let's go into edit, project settings, then on the right side select maps and modes. And let's change the editor start map and game default map to our new level. This will make it so that our level is the starting point for the game. The next thing we need to do is create our game mode blueprint. Once we have done that, let's go into the world settings on the right side and in the game mode override select our new game mode. This enables us to override the default pawn and the player controller. So let's do just that. Let's create our player controller blueprint and our ball pawn blueprint. You might wonder, what is a pawn? A pawn is anything that can be controlled. For example, a character, a plane, or in our case, a ball. The way it works, the player controller controls a pawn. But in this example, to not get too complicated, we will just focus on the concept of the pawn. Once we have created them, let's design our ball pawn. Open up the ball pawn blueprint, and in the components tab on the left side, add a sphere and set it as the root object just by dragging it on top. Now let's add a spring arm and the camera. Make sure the camera is parented to the spring arm. A spring arm is used to create an offset for the camera, preventing clipping with other objects and can help us with camera controls as we will see later. I will rotate my spring arm by 20 degrees, just so we can see our sphere better. If we click play, we will see it's not quite right. That's because our player start is in the middle of the plane. So to fix that, just lift the player start above the plane. Back in the ball pawn blueprint, I will set the length of the spring arm to 500. Then select the sphere component, find the physics section and enable simulate physics and the mass. Set the mass to 1. Now if you click play, we'll see our sphere fall to the ground. Ok, so now it's time for the hard part, the C++ part. Let's create the functionality for our ball pawn. At the top, select tools and click new C++ class. We want our class to be a pawn class, or in other words, we want our class to inherit a pawn class. I really hope whoever is watching this is familiar with the basics of C++ syntax, since I will not be going over that. As for the reference and pointers, you don't have to worry about that for now. Just remember most things we get in Unreal are pointers, and we use dash arrow instead of dot to access their functions. It will become more clear as you get further into learning. So the first thing we want to create is some input. We do that by declaring a uProperty variable with edit anywhere and blueprint read only parameters. The variable is gonna be of type uInputAction, 
let's call it movement action. The new property of our variable basically exposes that variable to Unreal Engine, and the parameter edit anywhere enables us to assign the value of movement action through the editor. But now we can see we have an error. We will fix that error by including input.h file. It is very important to include above the cpp ballpen.generated.h file or it will not compile. But we still have an error. This is where it gets a little bit annoying. From the editor, right click on your cpp class and select show in explorer. Go into your source folder and then rollable project and then open the rollable project build.cs file. Once open, at the end of the array of strings, add another string called enhanced input. Save and close that file. Now, go back to the root directory of your project, delete binaries and intermediate folders, and right click on rollable project.uproject file, and then click generate Visual Studio project files. Once that finishes, open the uproject file and you will see the missing modules pop up. Just click yes, it will close, but just wait a minute or two and the project will pop up. This is extremely annoying, I know, but if there is a better way, please comment down below. Now reopen our cpp ballpan class, and we should see the error is missing. If not, it could be just Visual Studio throwing false errors. Which, by the way, you will see a lot in Unreal Engine programming. Next up, we will need to also declare a U input mapping context, which is also a U property. I will explain both variables soon, but for now let's get back to the editor and click the compile button on the bottom right. Now let's create an input action and call it movement action. This is basically a file that describes what data an action uses and how. This is honestly all you need to know for now. When we open the file, we will see a value type setting. So, since we want to create our input movement, we need the input of horizontal and vertical axis, which we will input by using WSAD keys. So the value of this action will be axis 2D. That means the action will pass in two axis values or two vector values to our code so we can use. Next, let's create the mapping context. This is where we actually map our input action to our keys. So, let's set this up quickly. So, we map the WASD keys under the movement action and now we need to tell the editor what value we will pass in by holding those keys. By default, each key will send a vector2 of 1,0, so we will need to modify that by using the modifier settings. You can copy the settings from my screen, but to explain, the swizzle axis basically switches the x and y values, so we get an input of 0,1. And negate multiplies the value by minus 1, so we will get the input of minus 1,0 or if we use with the swizzle axis, 0, minus 1. Now that we have our input files created, open up the ballpan blueprint. Click the class setting button near the top. Now in the details panel, we will reparent our blueprint to our newly created cpp ballpan class. Once we have done that, if we go back to the class defaults menu, we will see available fields to assign our input action and our input mapping context, so let's assign them. Now we actually need to set up some function to be executed on input. Open up the cpp ballpan class and in our setup player input component function, we will need to bind the action to the function. First, we get the u enhanced input component, and to do that we will need to include it to our file. Then we call the bind action function. We pass in our movement action, set the trigger event to trigger, pass in some u object, or in this case just this, and lastly we will need to pass in a reference to a function we want to execute. Let's create an onMovement function with an argument const f input action value, let's name it the value, and now just pass in the reference to our onMovement function in our bind action function. In the onMovement, we will just log to console if the input is working at all. If we save and compile, we will see the input isn't working. That's because we still aren't finished with the input configuration. Let's return to our cpp ballpan class. We actually need to assign our mapping context. In begin play, we do that by getting the player controller, then getting the local player subsystem, clearing all mappings, and finally assigning our mapping context to the subsystem. Remember to include the necessary file for the u-enhanced input local player subsystem. If we go back to the editor and compile, we can finally see that our input function is working. 
Ok, so now that we got most of the boilerplate code out of the way, we can start getting the input and actually using it. In our onMovement function, let's get the access to the input value from the value parameter, and log it to the console to see if our input mapping is correct. For W and S keys, it should display a 1,0 and a minus 1,0. And for D and A keys, it should display a 0, 0,1 and 0, minus 1. If this isn't correct, please go back to the input mapping section and check if everything is in order. Now, to actually move our object, first we need to get the pointer to the sphere. The sphere is actually a U static mesh component. In the begin play function, let's get our sphere with the find component by class and passing in the U static mesh component as the template class. Then, in the onMovement function, since we already enabled physics on our sphere, we can use the addForce function to move our object. If we go back, compile and play, we can see the object isn't moving. Luckily, this is an easy fix. Just go into the ball pan blueprint, and set the mass to a very low number. You can also increase the input values in the addForce function if you prefer it that way. Now, if we try to move, we will see the whole pond rolling. We will fix the camera soon, but first I want to show you one more way of getting the sphere mesh component. What if we have multiple static mesh components in our blueprint? The font component by class will return some, but we have no idea which. So we have an option to find it by tag. Go into our ball pond blueprint and select the sphere. Now search for the tags and add a new component tag string named Sphere. Back in our script, change the find component by class to find component by tag and pass in the tag Sphere. Now we are certain we will get the correct static mesh component. So now to fix the camera roll. It's very simple. Go into a pan blueprint and select Spring Arm. In the Details panel, in the section Camera Settings, unchecked Inherit Pitch, Inherit Yaw and Inherit Roll. Now we can see the camera is not rolling with the sphere. To actually see the ball rolling, let's create a very simple material. Open the material and create a texture sample node, then connect it to the base color. For the texture, I found this checker texture, but you can use any you have. Then in our ball pan blueprint, select the sphere and assign our new material. Ok, so now let's create the camera movement control. I want to control the camera with my mouse, so let's first create a new input action and let's call it mouse movement. Open the input action and change the value type to axis 2D since our mouse can also move into axis. Then open our mapping context and assign the mouse movement and the mouse xy 2D axis as input. Luckily we don't have to change anything else. Now in our script, Create a new variable for our mouse movement input action. And let's create the onMouseMovement function. Where we will also just log our input. Now we just need to bind our mouse movement to our onMouseMovement function. When we save and compile, open the ball pan blueprint and assign the mouse movement variable. If we did everything correctly, we can see the input being printed out in the output log. To rotate our camera, we can just rotate the spring arm. In our script, let's add a new pointer variable, useSpringArm component, called SpringArm. Don't forget to include the proper file. In the begin play, we will get the SpringArm component, And now in onMouseMovement function, we can call the spring arm add local rotation and pass in the F rotator struct. The Y axis controls the pitch and the X axis controls the yaw rotation. If we compile and play, we can see that we can rotate our camera but it starts tilting on one side. To fix that, go back to the script and let's just constrain the spring camera relative rotation on the roll value so it's always zero. You can see that now we have the correct camera rotation, but there is still one problem. 
The ball will anyway move according to the world direction, not according to our camera direction, so let's fix that. Open the script and create a new variable for our camera of type uCameraComponent. Again, include the correct file. In begin play, we get our camera. Then in on movement, we will create a movement vector value where we will get the camera forward vector and multiply it by our input value.x. Then add to it camera right vector multiplied by input value.y. Just to be 100% certain, we can modify the camera forward vector to be parallel to the ground, since our camera is pointing a bit downwards. If we save and compile, we will see that the ball is now moving correctly. The next segment is to create a pickup. So we want to create an object that when we overlap it, we gain a point and destroy the object in the process. So let's start by creating a blueprint called pickup. Open our pickup and just add a cube component. Now let's place a couple of them on our level. Back in our script, let's create a function on begin overlap with the following parameters. Please make sure you have this exact order of parameters since there are very similar functions to this one, used for collision and overlap events. In the new function, let's just log if we overlapped any actor. And in the begin play, we need to bind our function to our sphere using onComponentBeginOverlap and passing this object and the reference to our new onOverlapBegin function. If we save and compile, I actually got the compile completed, but when I click play, I get this huge number of errors. A fix for this is very simple. Go back to our script and we need to declare our onOverlapBegin function with a uFunction macro. That way we expose the function to Unreal Engine internals as far as I know. Now if we press play, we will see that we are just bouncing off the pickup cubes and the log isn't showing. Make the function work, open up the pickup blueprint and select the cube. In the details, under the collision category, we need to change the collision presets to overlap all dynamic. If we save and press play, we will see that our function is working. Now we want to limit our own overlap begin to only pickups. We can do that by opening the pickup blueprint and adding a pickup tag to it. Back in the script, we can just check if the other actor contains a tag pickup. Now we will only affect pickup objects with this function. Since we are sure the function is working and we are affecting only pickups, we can destroy them on overlap. Next, we need to show the score, so let's create some UI. Let's create a widget blueprint and name it Rollerball HUD. In Unreal Engine, widgets are used to display UI. Let's open up the Rollerball HUD blueprint and drop in the canvas panel. That will be a root object. Next, drag and drop in a text object. Position the text wherever you like. But most importantly, at the top of the details panel, rename the object to score text since that's how we will find it later in code. Once we have completed that, go back to our script and add two properties. A U property with edit anywhere parameter, which is a T subclass of U user widget, named HUD class. This property will enable us to assign in the editor any class that derives from the class U user widget. Next, create a U property without any parameters of type U user widget named HUD. Also, remember to include the correct header file. Now, in begin play, we will create a widget of type HUD class and assign it to the HUD variable, and then call add to viewport function with the parameter 0. 0 is the sorting order number. If we save and compile, the compile should fail. I managed to fix this issue by creating a new C class of type user widget. If anybody has a better solution to this, please comment down below. But once the class finishes creating, the compile should succeed. Now open up our ball pan blueprint and we should see a new field for the HUD class. I sign our rollerball HUD blueprint and then save and click play. We should see our text displayed on screen. Next, to write the score to a text, go back to our script 
and create a new float variable called score. Then in the onOverlapBegin function, we will first increment the score variable, then get the widget tree, then from the tree use find widget of type uTextBlock and pass in the fname struct of our text name, which is score text. Next, we create our output string and set the string using the score text set text. We pass in the variable by using f text from string. Now, back in the editor, we should see our score is updating when we pick up a queue. Now, instead of getting the tree and finding the text block every time we pick up, we can do that in begin play and assign it to our class property. For the final part of this tutorial, I will show you how to spawn an object on the level. So, to make it simple, let's create a new property for a spawn input action. Then create an onSpawn function. But this time we will use a trigger event completed, since we want it to activate only once per key press. Now in our onSpawn function, we can spawn an actor by getWorld, then spawn actor. But we need an actor to spawn, so let's quickly create a queue property with edit anywhere of type subclass of AA actor and call it pickup actor. Now just pass in the pickup actor to our spawn actor and finally just set its location to some random position. Once the compile finishes, back in the editor, let's create our spawn input. In our mapping context, just map the spawn input to the spacebar. We don't need any other settings since it only needs to activate the function. Finally, in our ball pan blueprint, just assign our spawn input and our pickup actor. If we click play, we can now spawn pickup cubes all over the level. That's it for now, I hope you enjoyed this beginner Unreal Engine C++ tutorial. Please don't be too harsh if I made some mistakes, I'm also learning in the process and feel free to comment any corrections so others will see also. All the code was put into a single C++ class just for simplicity, but that is of course not recommended and you should split responsibilities to appropriate classes and blueprints. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider supporting by liking, commenting, subscribing or if you're really generous, subscribing to my Patreon link below. I hope to be a bit more consistent with videos from now on, on both tutorials and tips regarding game dev. See you next time, bye bye.